this is what an antipode map looks like, and it shows where the other side of the world would be. And if we go over to New York City, and dug a hole that went straight through the earth, you would end up in the Indian Ocean southwest of Australia. But that isn't very interesting, is it? My name is Elio, and in this video, we're going to be talking about where you would end up if you dug this hole, and what you would need to get through to actually dig the hole. But let's return to the antipode map. Right off the bat, there are two places where antipodes overlap, first being the North and South Pole with countries like Greenland and Northern Canada, and the second being parts of East Asia and Southern South America. You can also see that Spain and New Zealand are antipodes on the map. Let's first head over to China and go into Shanghai, we're somehow able to dig a hole that went through the earth would end up in a small village in Argentina. Now let's travel to Europe, and more specifically Spain. If we were to go to Seville and dig another hole that traveled through the earth, we would end up in the Pacific Ocean, but only 40 miles away lies Auckland, a city in New Zealand. We would end up from Europe to Oceania. Well, if we could actually connect these two cities together, why haven't we already done so? Well, apart from the fact that we simply don't have the tools to do so, we also said that if we dug a hole at Seville, we would end up in water. But we could just dig the hole in Auckland, we would end up in southern Spain, which would still connect New Zealand with Europe. So if we could just pretend that we ha actually had the tools to dig this hole, could we theoretically do this? Let's take a look at what we would be digging through to get from New Zealand to Spain. This is what it would take to dig a hole through the earth. First, let's take a look at the deepest hole ever dug. It's called the Kola Super Deep Borehole, and it's in Russia, and also in the Arctic region. This is the deepest hole ever dug on Earth, and it's seven and a half miles deep. This might sound like a lot, but the depth of the Earth's crust, which is like the thinnest layer, and is the surface of the Earth, 25 miles deep. Now, if we decided to dig this hole, the beginning would be fairly easy, as we'd be digging through mostly dirt, clay, and tons of rock. But we somehow managed to dig all the way through the Earth's crust and get to the boundary between the crust and the mantle, which is the second layer of the Earth. The temperature would be a staggering 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. For comparison, a diamond will begin to melt at 1,562 degrees Fahrenheit. Our drill would inevitably begin to melt, but if we somehow managed to keep going despite the heat and keep drilling through the mantle, we would end up at the boundary between the mantle and the outer core and we would be experiencing temperatures of 6,332 degrees Fahrenheit. Most heat-resistant material ever made can withstand temperatures of 7,232 degrees Fahrenheit. If somehow we can keep digging past the mantle and into the core, we would eventually reach the peak temperatures of 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is comparable to the surface of the sun. Here's where things get slightly confusing. Let's take a look at this picture of our hole so far. As we keep digging through the core, gravity would at some point switch around, and instead of digging down, we would now be digging up. This is because we would pass the point where gravity is, and instead of digging down towards the core, we would be digging away from the core and digging up. Our drill would also need to be strong enough to support itself in the inner core and not collapse into it and be squished into a ball. If our drill was able to survive that, the other half of the trip would get easier as we start from the inner core, start going up to the surface where gravity isn't as strong and the temperatures begin to cool. That is what we'd have to get through to dig a hole through the earth. <laughs> 